What's up, guys? Uh, Fight Club 2K3 here. Um, just doing a little response video to uh, Professor N's explanation of the uh, Stoics and human agency. And uh, it was a great video. So thank you for that. I think it uh, really clarified a lot of things um, that we've been talking about. Uh, I definitely, I've read Epictetus um, from your book list. And uh, thank you for that, too. Uh, and there is... There is a lot to be said for the wisdom that the Stoics had in regards to, you know, having um, an indifference to the things that you cannot control and uh, practicing human agency, which seems to have a positive uh, correlation with, you know, the given potentialities of an individual and the responsibility to um, activate and actively use those, um, if you like to call them, gifts or, uh, you know, given potentials with the uh, engaged in the world. Um, just uh, just to comment on that a little bit, I'm going to talk a little bit about narratives, um, the ego, and uh, limitations, and see if I can't get at um, maybe some type of uh, logical explanation of why uh, certain people have limitations, <clears throat> various in individuals have limitations of, uh, you know, what they can or can't cross out in relation to uh, their human agency. And uh, I think I'd like to start with uh, some of Becker's um, quotes in uh, his book, uh, The Birth and Death of Meaning. Um, so uh, Becker says that, Speech is everything that we can specifically call human precisely because without speech, there can be no true ego. Um, so language in a very literal way becomes uh, becomes almost this creation or co-creation of uh, our realities and the realization of our own potential possibilities. Um, uh, how that arises in consciousness, I think, is directly related to the biological and chemical um, um, beings that we are um, when we come into the world, we are we have certain attributes that you know certain people are good at really good at um, certain things, others are not, um, and there is a, a set of almost uh, not imposed but um, already given. Uh, limitations within an individual. Um, in in the narrative uh, interpretation um, that we are n we are never wholly you know stationed in one narrative, but we are continually um, experiencing life through a stream of narratives. Um, in that interpretation, um, there is something. Uh, there's a concept called the objectifying of an individual's agency to the outside world, which has almost a um, futile ring to it. Um, and again, this individuals can play to this myth of passivity as if we were not intricately enmeshed within an active uh, process. You know, life, um, you know, uh, makes us active. It, it, there's no way to be passive within it. Um, so, so not getting too much into all the uh, psychoanalytical parts of it, um, depression becomes so depression and alienation becomes somewhat of a self-defense mechanism when one uh, when one is, I guess, afraid or scared to act um, within his own agency and take responsibility for what can be called his fate and I, and I say fate as in um, the knee chain sense of becoming who you are um, Becker has a, uh, a quote here and it says uh, the child becomes a point of reference in relation to others before he becomes an agent of action for himself so in this objectifying of, of uh, the agency by the individual to the external world, it's almost uh, giving up. It's almost like a regression, a self-defense mechanism caused by, um, which is 
emerge, which emerges in consciousness um, almost by the the um, already given limitations of of an individual. It seems that um, certain individuals have an easier time of doing that than other individuals, and that it, and I think that is uh, definitely correlated to. Um, um, how this individual was raised early in life and also his own specific genes. Um, I guess uh, what I'm getting at is if there is not a, um, a distinct uh, positive correlation between uh, someone who has great potentiality and then the responsibility to use those potentialities increases both ways. Uh, um, so there's, and I'm still trying to figure out the guilt factor in that, but uh, I, I guess that's it. I mean, that could also play into uh, how consciousness is an epiphenomenon of um, the physical. Um, I, I mean, in the case that I just gave, uh, when someone regresses to almost like a childlike um, a point of reference in relation to others, um, it, it, it seems to work out. All right, that, uh, that's pretty much all I have, but um, I was really hoping uh, if you could do me a favor, uh, Professor N, and that's, um, uh, could you shoot a video on... Um, how the Stoics view time as cyclical, and and how you think that could have practical purposes uh, within our lives um, regarding um, our agency and our freedom and responsibility to uh, become who we are. All right, thanks. Have a good day.